Our appetite for energy is vast. And it is growing all the time. But fossil fuel use damages the climate and its sources will be exhausted sooner or later. We need new energy sources that are also environmentally friendly. These scientists at the Max Planck Institute in Magdeburg are working on just that. Here they are not doing physical exercises, but rather they are explaining one of the building blocks of the energy revolution, the fuel cell, and what happens inside it when it makes electricity from hydrogen. But more of that soon. The fuel cell is a really fascinating device which I can use to turn chemical energy directly into electrical energy. But in order to make the fuel cell practical, we still need to solve a number of scientific problems. We are pinning great hopes for the future on the fuel cell. It is the most effective way of generating electricity from hydrogen. The efficiency currently lies at about 50%, but not all fuel cells achieve this level. Professor Zundmacher and his team at the Max Planck Institute for Dynamics of Complex Technical Systems want to understand what this efficiency depends on and how it might be increased. To do so, they are starting with the control systems. How can we control the fuel cell during operation in order to increase its efficiency? They are focusing on the processes occurring on the semi-permeable membrane deep inside it. This is where the power is produced. The principle is simple. The dolphins with the yellow balls represent a hydrogen molecule with two protons and two electrons. A catalyzing layer in front of the membrane ensures that the hydrogen molecules are separated from their electrons. The membrane behind only allows the protons to pass through. On the other side, oxygen flows into the fuel cell. Each oxygen atom grabs two electrons, and the protons also latch on. The result is the product of the reaction in the fuel cell, H2O, better known as water. The trick in this process is that the electrons are forced to make a detour. And this flow of electrons is electrical power, power that can be put to use. So that's the principle. The fuel cell is especially environmentally friendly when it uses hydrogen produced from wind or solar energy. Or hydrogen from special reactors containing biomass. The scientists in Magdeburg are focusing on this method in one of their projects. The problem is that hydrogen made from biomass contains traces of carbon monoxide. And that's the shark. The carbon monoxide blocks the catalyzing agent in front of the membrane and prevents the hydrogen from being broken down effectively. This reduces the efficiency. So the scientists are aiming to get rid of that disruptive carbon monoxide by using controlling engineering to control the main influencing variables within the fuel cell. One influencing variable is the gas flow. How much hydrogen must be introduced at a particular time so that the fuel cell can work as efficiently as possible? Another important parameter is the dampness of the fuel cell. It should be neither too dry on the one side nor too wet on the other. During operation, however, the moisture balance changes. The protons draw water through the membrane onto the other side. So the scientists have to adjust the balance. A third influencing variable is the performance. How much electricity should the cell produce at any time? Because the load affects whether it will operate efficiently or not. The performance of the fuel cell increases considerably during operation when all these parameters are set correctly and properly adjusted. If they are not, less electricity is produced. It is extremely difficult to control all these factors. The cell is a complex dynamic system, like this pendulum. It has three sections which can move freely, rather like the three main operating parameters in the fuel cell. If one variable changes, then the others change at the same time as well. 
The scientists attempt to keep the pendulum upright by adjusting the influencing variables such as gas flow, humidity and performance. In the case of the pendulum, a slider moves rapidly backwards and forwards, balancing the movements of the sections. If the pendulum is disrupted, it adjusts rapidly in order to compensate and quickly returns to its vertical position. For a long time, scientists thought that it was essential for the pendulum or the fuel cell to be kept in a balanced state so that the individual parameters fluctuate as little as possible. That, they believed, would guarantee maximum efficiency. Later, however, they learned that this was wrong. It seems as if it is actually disorder that produces a better result. Moreover, with this fuel, Professor Zuntmacher and his team observed a very curious phenomenon. If they removed too much power from the cell, the voltage suddenly fluctuated. First of all, the scientists want to know how these fluctuations are caused. They suspect that the cause will be found on the membrane. At individual points, which are spread all over the membrane, the carbon monoxide disrupts the generation of the electricity and all these disruptions added together result in a change in the potential. The scientists have assembled in front of the institute to show us what happens. Each of them represents a tiny point on the membrane. The voltage there can fluctuate, for example, independently of its neighbor. Professor Zundmacher's team has devised a mathematical model to understand the way the fuel cell reacts. They discovered that the fluctuations can be linked together locally, so the voltage does not merely swing back and forth, but is dependent on its neighbor. That is shown in this part of the equation. This means that the voltage peaks can move across the membrane in waves. But places that are far away from each other can also be linked together. Then the voltage fluctuations can synchronize with each other across the entire membrane. In practice, the scientists found a mixture of all three ways in which the voltage oscillates back and forth. And most importantly, they discovered that they need not suppress the fluctuations in order to make the fuel cell work optimally. On the contrary. The cyclic behavior is used in a targeted manner. Lots of living systems do this. Just think of a beach which is constantly being cleaned by the waves as the tide flows in and out. In the case of the fuel cell, the dynamics help us, so to speak, to clean the system continuously and to keep it operating at a good level. Now the scientists know how the fluctuations are caused and have discovered that they can use this fact to remove the disruptive carbon monoxide from the catalyzing agent. They control the fluctuations by making the voltage peaks oxidize the disruptive gas and therefore remove it. This does not block the catalyzing agent. But while the voltage fluctuations increase the power production in the fuel cell, they would of course disrupt the power supply for an electric motor or a lamp. In practice, however, that is not a problem. Electronics can be used outside the fuel cell to even out the ups and downs. In an all-hydrogen economy, we could indeed produce carbon dioxide-free energy by means of the fuel cell. And that, of course, would be fantastic. The better scientists can understand and control the processes within the fuel cell, the sooner this promising technology will be able to leave the laboratory and be used for a wide range of applications. And so the scientists in Magdeburg are contributing towards a sustainable energy revolution.